Hello whiskey fans and today I'm going to be looking at the Ardmore traditional cask and your eyes are not playing tricks on you this is a very small tube because this is one that I had to source online because as I said in my review of Ardmore legacy cask um, Ardmore traditional cask has entirely disappeared there was a brief revival at one point for anyone that hasn't seen my old video or isn't aware of Ardmore, this is the old style whiskey which was bottled at 46% ABV and non chill filtered. Ardmore have done a rather curious complete U turn since then. A few years ago, they decided to rebrand everything the, the tube and the labels gone to this pale colour scheme here from my last review, and it's gone to 40% ABV and chill filtered. And it's also removed things from the label like references to the, the quarter casks that they were using on this old bottling. Uh, about five years ago there was a, a little resurgence of the old traditional cask. It's re-released as Ardmore Traditional or Ardmore Tradition. It wasn't exactly the same name as this one and that seemed like a good thing for a little while. It seemed like they were bringing back the 46% whiskey as an option but at least where I am here in the east of England, the Ardmore tradition, or traditional, whatever it was called, has completely disappeared again. And where I am, and also with my online sources, this Ardmore legacy is the only Ardmore that is available. Well, it's the only standard bottling from the distillery that I can find these days, which is a shame. So this bottle here, this miniature, is something that... I've had quite a few bottles of years ago. I have still got my tasting notes. This one here is a miniature that I found online and from what I've tasted already it does seem to pretty much tie up with what I remember and what I wrote in my notes. But this little miniature is all I could find and I actually had to pay quite a lot of money for this. It's probably paid nearly as much for this little miniature of an obsolete whiskey as I used to pay for a full bottle when it was on offer in the supermarkets, a full 700 milliliter bottle. So let's get some of this in the glass and see if it really is as good as I and probably other people remember or is it just rose tinted whiskey goggles? Get that screw top on there, trap that expensive whiskey in. So the colour of this, I did mention the colour of the, the Ardmore Legacy in my review. I'd say that it's pretty similar. It's possibly a touch lighter, but I don't think that the, the colouring is a new thing on this whiskey. Just have a look on the back of the tube here, it's impossibly small writing. Yeah, it does actually say that even on the, the old style whiskey from 10, 15 years ago, even though it was 46% and non-chill filtered, they were still adding caramel colouring, even in the old bottling. So that's not a new thing. But possibly less than they are now. So immediately, I think we can probably call the, the videos were closed now. We have an answer. This is much better than what we had before. Definitely much more aroma, much more intense on the nose already than we saw out of the 40% modern bottling, the Ardmore Legacy. I'd say that the peatiness is probably about the same. It's probably not changed too much. There's I'd say a little bit more wood spice, a little bit, a little bit more oakiness, and what there is lots more of is lots of really sweet, juicy lemon and lime spiritiness. It's really everything that you had on the Ardmore Legacy, but turned up, especially the the influence from the spirit itself. And that peatiness, I'll say there, there is a little bit more peatiness on that one, and it's again, it's like a, a light Laphroaig like I had on the like I found on the Ardmore Legacy but there's also a little bit more character and it's a little bit more in your face there's a little bit more of a, an ashiness the sort of thing that you might get from a Lagavulin it's just that little bit less sanitized than I got out of the the peat on the Ardmore Legacy 
there's a, a big hit of vanilla and caramel a little bit of lemon and lime like I said it's quite a nice bitter edge to the, the lemony notes on this one though and there's also a little bit of a, a cough sweet quality which again brings me back to a little bit of a Bowmore character to this and like I said on the Ardmore Legacy it's more the fact that this is a bit of a middle of the road doesn't really stray out in any one direction it doesn't want to confine itself to one type of whiskey it's really it's more of an all-rounder some slightly bitter oaky wood spice honey and cough sweets it's a really nice gristy maltiness on this one too I think it's it's um, I'd almost liken it to when you're listening to music and you have a song that you really like and you're just listening to it with the, the EQ set so that you've just got bass and treble and nothing in the middle and that's kind of what you're looking at with the Ardmore Legacy but with the Ardmore traditional cask it's really got the full spectrum of the orchestra it's just got so many different facets to it more than you have with the the current bottling and they all play together ever so nicely so on the palate lots of sweet medium peat and wood spice at times it does actually get a little bit ashy it's a lot more of a developed and a lot more of a mature and robust peatiness on this one compared to the, the modern bottling but that ashiness it never gets away it never causes a problem because it's really nicely restrained by that caramel vanilla sweetness and the maltiness and I do think that's why that's the explanation for what I said before that Ardmore when I was getting into whiskey it was always a good dependable quality and affordable whiskey but I never showed it that much love and I think the reason for that is because it is such a middle of the road whiskey and also I think those quarter casks it's not something that I'm overly fond of I think that the the wood spice and especially that specific influence that you get from quarter casks it covers up quite a lot and it can be a little bit heavy-handed I think with this one they've just about got away with it it just about works but I do wonder if without all of that wood influence you would have a little bit better whiskey than what we've got here I think this is a good whiskey but again and to a lesser extent than I had on the the modern bottling the nose on this one promises that little bit more than the palate delivers but on this old bottling at the higher ABV the difference between the nose and the palate is that much closer it's going to have a little bit more so the finish on this one the late palate and the finish of this 46% old style bottling compared to the modern 40% is so much better the late palette has got so much more power behind it and the finish lingers much longer it's definitely not a short finish I'd say probably medium long and it lingers with lots of really nice mild peat and cough sweet notes which again reminds me a little bit of Beaumont but compared to Isla whiskey in general I would say that even this 46% Ardmore the peat is definitely quite tame and quite mild compared to any of the the big Isla peaters especially any of the the big South Shore three so as for a grade I'm going to give this one a B minus so that's a whole grade above C minus for the the current bottling B minus for this one so that's at the bottom of what I would call very good it's still slightly on the mild side but it's complex enough it's got some nice light peat to it and the body and the finish are the important things really improved over the 40% bottling that really is the important thing that I can't stress enough with this 46% bottling that it has the power to back up the flavors has the power to make the the palette and the finish match or near enough match what you get on the nose and for that reason I'm going to say it's head and shoulders above the current Ardmore Legacy but it's still not quite setting my world on fire it's still only a B minus and I do wonder if that's the reason for what's happened to Ardmore going from 46% ABV non chill filtered to 40% chill filtered you basically turned Macallan into famous gross there and I wonder if the reason why they've done this 
is because maybe a lot of people were like me and the the bottom shelf whiskey drinkers maybe weren't interested in the the fancy branding and the the slightly higher price tag and went for something cheaper and the whiskey connoisseurs weren't as interested in this whiskey as they could have been and i do have to wonder if the people at ardmore have seen this and because of that they've decided to go after the more budget orientated end of the market it's very easy for people like us to sit here on the internet and badmouth whiskies and constantly berate them for going for weak chill filtered colored and all of these bad money grabbing things but we have to remember that these distilleries are businesses and they do do these things for a reason obviously that's not to say that it's a good thing and hopefully one day Ardmore will go back to the the old craft presentation I will also leave a little bit of the blame with the supermarkets as well because to have your product in a price sensitive budget cost orientated market such as a supermarket where everything is stack at high sell it cheap and make a few pence on every sale that can be a real double-edged sword for a company like a whiskey distillery especially if the distillery is approaching supermarkets and they're constantly pressuring them to drive the prices down drive the cost per unit down to try and improve their sales that's not going to be a good thing so I think that's about all I can say about Ardmore's current standard bottlings. I think that'll do nicely. Let me know what your thoughts are on Ardmore in the comments. Which do you prefer? If you've had both or if you remember this one, do you miss this one? Or do you think this one is good enough? Or do you just not like Ardmore at all? Let me know in the comments and I look forward to hearing from you. Cheers.